Airflow, an open source workflow management tool that was developed by Airbnb back in 2014, has become a popular tool for data engineers to automate and orchestrate a lot of their various data flows because it naturally takes a lot of things into consideration that we do, everything from having a scheduler that lets us say when certain jobs should run, as well as managing dependencies. So you can have job A run before job B that can run before job C and D or whatever setup that you have. This is often referenced as a DAG or a directed acyclic graph, basically just having some sort of dependency chart for your overall process. And although this tool works well as a framework, there are some difficulties that people have when they go into actually deploying it. In particular, deploying these systems can be very complex because you need to have a lot of other components in order to scale and manage all of the workers that you will likely need because you can't just run it off one VM. You'll likely need multiple VMs to run all of the various jobs that you have. And thus this causes a lot of problems. This is where we get to the core of this video, which is comparing different forms of managed services for Airflow. In particular, we're looking at Cloud Composer, MWAA, and Astronomer. For those unfamiliar, Cloud Composer is the GCP or Google version of this whole managed service. MWAA or Managed Workflows for Apache Airflow is Amazon's, and Astronomer is its own independent kind of service that 100% focuses on managed Airflow services. Now, I've actually had the opportunity to work with Cloud Composer and MWAA in actual projects that I do for clients, as well as talk heavily with the astronomer team in order to kind of understand what they feel like their value add is over the last few months in particular. So I wanted to talk to you guys about what I find good about these various solutions and which ones you might want to use for different situations. So let's dive into the various forms of managed airflow, starting out with ease of setup. Now, both MWAA and Cloud Composer actually have a very easy setup process. We are going to overlay kind of the different workflows for both of these here as I'm kind of talking. But in particular, when we look at, for example, MWAA, you can see it's pretty easy in terms of like what you need to select. Basically, you just need to pick your Airflow version, point at the different buckets and plugins that you're going to be using, and then a few other components in terms of like setting up scaling, in terms of like workers. And that's pretty much it. From there, you can pretty much hit create. And about 20 or 30 minutes later, you have a whole managed Airflow instance. As you can see here, all you need to do after you create a DAG is then upload it to your DAG folder. And then your managed Airflow instance will automatically pick it up. That's it. You have a 100% managed Airflow service that will scale based off what configurations you provided and you're done, right? Like it's that easy. And Cloud Composers is about the same. There's a little bit more, I think, in terms of some extra configuration, but overall it's about the same and it takes about, again, the same 20 or 30 minutes. So both of these solutions are great if you have a very simple set of Airflow use cases that you need to do. There's not a whole ton of maybe extra drivers or other components you need to add into your configuration because those will be very difficult to figure out how to maybe run them. Like even things like adding DBT or something in your process might be harder than you think. And so these tools are great for, I think, simpler use cases. But the problem is, and I found this out as well, is when you start building more complex solutions, and for example, I had to connect to an IBM machine, which for those unfamiliar, has some dependencies with like drivers that you need to have on the machine in order to actually interact with your IBM machine. I struggled to find the solution by running it from MWAA or Cloud Composer. Both do not provide an easy way to, I think, add in these components. I've seen some interesting solutions for this where people actually went to like the cluster and then found the VM and then actually had to manually add in the uh, driver or whatever add-on they wanted to add in rather than having it in a Docker file. So I'm actually kind of confused why both of these services don't just allow you to edit some form of Docker file that creates the images that often run all of these various services. But that was a major hindrance for more complex work that I needed to do. And that's where Astronomer can solve some people's problems. I will say that Astronomer does require a little bit more of a learning curve in the fact that there is a little bit more that you will need to do to actually set it up but that is a benefit if you have a more complex solution. It only took me about five minutes with Astronomer to figure out how I could possibly update a Docker image in order to have some of these extra components that I would need. And so it is far more flexible in terms of like maybe doing more complex work while also managing a lot of these other complexities like scaling and all these other issues that you're going to have if you try to do this on your own. So although there is a steeper learning curve with Astronomer, for those out there with more complex use cases for Airflow, it might be the right tool for you. This is generally the trade-off you get for a more managed service versus one that's maybe more flexible. The one that's more flexible will always 
inevitably due to its flexibility require you to understand more because that flexibility comes with the need to understand why it's flexible and what you can actually modify and configure versus one that's very stiff and doesn't allow for much flexibility but at the same time only provides like three to ten different ways you could possibly configure this whole solution, meaning it's much easier to understand. I think the way I like to describe to me in terms of these different solutions is Airflow managed by like MWAA is a little closer to like a Fisher price, like my first Airflow kind of system. It's not taking a knock at it. It's just saying that like, if you're not sure if Airflow is even the right solution, or if you just want to get a proof of concept out there, it's a great first tool. But as soon as you start getting into more complex use cases, you might need to go to something like Astronomer. Both do provide benefits. And again, in some cases, it might be better to look at Cloud Composer and MWAA, while in other cases, it might be better to go the Astronomer out. There are two other points I'd like to bring up when comparing Astronomer to MWAA and Google Cloud Composer. First, I'd like to point out that Astronomer and their team are very closely tied with Airflow. They spend a lot of time actually contributing to the Airflow project. So they do a lot more than just, again, sell a service, but they try to actually improve Airflow which means that they're very tightly coupled with the work that Airflow is doing, and they're constantly on the latest version of Airflow. For example, right now, if you go back to looking at MWAA and seeing what you can create, you will notice that the latest version you can pick is 2.02. Now, they might have updated it by the time you see this video, but that's the current version that I'm seeing, whereas the newest version of Airflow is actually 2.2.1. Now, again, these are just a bunch of numbers, but there are different features that could be very useful to you in this most recent version or maybe some of them get deprecated in your current version that then make it very difficult for you to work forward. So that's why it's important to make sure whichever solution you pick probably stays with the recent versions, which then kind of brings me to my third point. And this is going to make it seem like I am touting Astronomer as the only solution, which is far from the case. I think MWAA and Cloud Composer both work well, and I use them for several clients, but I think for more complex solutions, as well as having the benefit of people that do airflow and do it well, then Astronomer is a really solid choice. That's kind of my third point, which is Astronomer is an airflow only solution. They're not focused on trying to deliver other services to you like AWS and GCP. Their only focus is airflow, which means they try to do it as well as possible. They try to understand all of the problems and they try to create very robust solutions. They actually have a lot of people on staff who are very well versed in airflow because like a specialist in terms of like doctors, this is what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, AWS, their focus is really about your whole solution. AWS and GCP are much more focused on the bigger picture and all of your components rather than specifically just a managed airflow instance. So if you were to call like an AWS solutions architect, they might not have as in-depth knowledge about airflow. They might because that might be something that they do a lot of, but overall you're likely to get a generalist and not a specialist. And so if your focus is on airflow and that's what you really want to work on and deal with all the various problems that you will run into with airflow, as well as get a good understanding of like what best practices are, you're going to get a lot better and fuller service from the team at Astronomer than you would from someone that's very generalized on the cloud. Why I enjoy all of these services is because they all take away a lot of the heavy lifting that people are gonna figure out you have to do when you launch Airflow. I've seen people launch their Airflow instances on their VM and then not point their logs to some form of bucket, whether it's S3 or cloud storage, doesn't matter. The point is then they just store it locally and within a few months, they wonder why their Airflow instance has failed because their VM is out of memory. Also, to scale across multiple workers becomes very challenging. Then you've got to figure out how the different executors work and how to kind of set that whole thing up and like deal with Redis and all these other components. It's far from impossible and there's plenty of articles showing you how to do it, but this down the line doesn't make sense for companies that maybe one, don't have the support or the engineering staff to actually manage it or two, need to scale quickly. Yes, you could obviously spin up your own system, but if you're a one-man show, I don't recommend this. I, I get it that we enjoy as engineers to be smart and thus we like to like solve problems and set up these complex solutions. But sometimes if you have a small team or maybe your team needs to focus in other areas, you need to realize you do not have time to manage this whole system, not just again, spinning it up, but when things go down and when failures inevitably happen because some service in your whole set of services fail, you need to fix it. And that's why I feel like a managed Airflow instance is a often 
better solution than trying to spin it up yourself. Again, if you've got a giant team of data engineers and it's not too expensive for you, then yeah, maybe consider doing it yourself. There are obviously a lot of benefits there, but that means you're gonna have to probably take one or maybe even two data engineers away from focusing on you know, making new pipelines and probably have them focus more on maintenance and just keeping the whole instance running, which could easily cost you 150K to 300K a year just to keep this service running. So that's often the trade-off you're gonna be making as a manager if you wanna have like a fully customizable system or you can maybe spend some of that money on a service like Astronomer or maybe MWAA and have them take care of a lot of that heavy lifting so your team can focus on the value add stuff like creating data pipelines and making sure you make good choices on how you're doing transformations and all the business logic you're doing. That is often a far bigger value add than you know trying to manage your Airflow instances but I would love to hear your thoughts about Airflow or if you have any questions about Airflow in general. And if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see me set up an Airflow instance in an MWAA or a Cloud Composer, let me know below. I, I may or may not do that depending on how this video does and depending on who it attracts. But hopefully for those of you who are wondering about the differences between some of these tools, I hope that provided some insight in terms of like, what are some of the benefits that you can find using these different solutions? Airflow is definitely a solid choice when it comes to like workflow management tools. And so I would love to hear kind of your thoughts even in general about Airflow or your questions. And with that guys, I just wanna say thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.